Hello there and welcome to episode one of Talking Telly. Uh, my name's James. Um, I currently work in the TV industry and I wanted to do this vlog to help new starters and anyone looking to get into the industry talk about my life and experiences. Uh, I'm based in the UK so uh, it's going to be UK based mainly um, because I've not worked abroad and I think it works differently especially in America and other countries. So this episode is going to be about my introduction to TV, uh, how I got started. So to give you some backstory, um, way back in 2011 I started a degree in broadcasting journalism and media communications. Uh, I did that for three years, it was an undergraduate degree with the end point of hopefully getting some work in the TV, TV industry. Um, I've always wanted to work in TV, I'm a creative person, I like writing, I like watching TV and finding out the behind the scenes uh, elements of any show or film I'm watching if I'm really into it. Uh, to give you some uh, background on my interests, uh, TV and film wise, I'm a big fan of Doctor Who, Game of Thrones, the Marvel and DC films and TV shows, uh, Bridgerton, uh, good ITV dramas, uh, what else? I've got a really eclectic taste really, love Star Wars as well, uh, a lot of uh, Discovery of Witches, also um, any fantasy or sci-fi or drama really. Um, I'm always good, looking for a good recommendation, so if you've got any recommendations, please uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. Uh, yeah, so I did that degree for three years. Um, now, uh, unfortunately, the TV industry is very hard to get into, but don't let that put you off. Um, most people, sorry, that's my cat Socks, she's a guest in today on the video. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't let that put that off. If you've got the passion and determination, you really want to do it, keep trying and trying and trying. Uh, so after uni, unfortunately, didn't get into TV. I tried, I applied for uh, various graduate schemes, apprenticeships, uh, and any tradie schemes I could find. Uh, so after uni, I went into retail. Um, I've worked in a bakery, warehouses, because I didn't really know what I would do. I worked in an office. Uh, so um, yeah, yeah it, it, I lot enjoyed the jobs, but it, and they helped me become who I am today and gave me lots of transferable skills. So if you don't need a degree to work in TV at all, it's all about the transferable skills you can come. So if you work in retail, that means you've got customer service, you know how to then transfer that into working with guests and presenters and also other crew members. Um, if you work in a warehouse, for example, you need to be organised. So that helps helps a lot. So don't be put off just because you haven't got a degree because you. I'd say I've gained more experience since uh, working in the industry and being there rather than the degree. Like it helped because it gave me a, a, a further understanding of the industry and like, technical skills. But you don't need a degree at all to work in TV. So let's fast forward. So in 2014, I graduated. I got a two one with uh, honours, which I was really happy about. Um, then let's fast forward to 2019. Obviously, uh, the coronavirus pandemic happened. Unfortunately, I lost my job due to COVID and no one was hiring, really. Uh, so I thought, what could I do? And then that's what reignited my passion for TV. So I said in my master's degree in TV production. So I did that for, for a year. Uh, till July last year, so 2021. Um, and then after I graduated, uh, I then uh, was uh, I joined uh, a few Facebook groups. So there's people in TV runners, if you've got disability, uh, deaf and disabled people in TV. Now these are UK specific, but they do sometimes advertise uh, jobs abroad. Uh, so did that and I was blind for everything. Uh, I didn't really get, get anywhere until one day I saw an advert for Dickinson's Real Deal, which for those based out the side UK, you might not know what it is. It's a antiques uh, show on ITV, uh, but they're very, very keen on new entrants. And every year they do travel around to different locations. They have different dealers and members of the public can come and bring their items in the hopes of getting it valued. Uh, the dealer makes an offer or they can go to auction. It's been running for about 17, 18 years now. It's, a, it's quite popular over here in the UK. 
So then I did, uh, I applied, I wasn't expecting to get it, but then I got an email, I sent my CV over, I did the application for, and they invited me to join them on, on the day. It was only a day's work, but I'm not greedy at all. A day is better. It means you've got a day's worth of experience that otherwise I wouldn't have. So it was, it was local to where I live in the UK. So from what I, uh, so I was very nervous starting, uh, obviously I hadn't worked in TV, it's my first proper TV job. Um, yeah, so it was about, I think, from what I remember, it was 7 a.m., it was only last year, 7 a.m. till 5 p.m. And then, so we start, turned up at 7 o'clock. Uh, we were lucky, I, just by charts, we were all new starters, so it's any UK-based runners, definitely try and apply for Dickinson's Real Deal because it is worth it. Uh, we were met by the production runner and the whole team was really, really lovely. Uh, so I didn't really know what roles, but there was, luckily they had different roles available on the day that they chose people. And then you rotated uh, uh, to a different role. So it was broken up after lunch. Uh, so uh, my first role was on the reception desk, which I really, really enjoyed. It was really fun. Uh, that means I checked people into the venue, basically, after they had their COVID, uh, went to the COVID desk. It was really well organised. Uh, I kind of handed them a leaflet about, about the day. Uh, there was a local antiques dealer there who was there for the auction. The presenter was there too. Um, uh, then I gave them a ticket and basically marked off uh, how many guests there just to give the production company an idea of how many people were at the day uh, if they're going to come back to the venue I imagine uh, but uh, it was really fun so I did that and it was quite quite a busy it was a quite very busy day which was quite good lots of people turned up so uh, there was about there's quite a few of us and we we're all new starters like I like I said uh quite good so we all got chatting got to know each other uh, I know at least two of the runners I was with on that day they become uh, friend, friends of mine and we sort of uh, followed their career and they're both doing really really well so uh, it was finished about half five I think it is so if you're you've got to be flexible I definitely uh, some productions they have long tv uh, production days and you can't really say oh can I go home now but you've got a really really good reason so definitely if you're starting out as a runner be as flexible as possible uh, but no I really enjoyed myself and that one day really really made a difference uh, that I did a further two days on Dickinson's Real Deals I think it was a month after that as well it was really good um, uh, got to know uh, the production team, asking questions. I always talk to people, find out about what they do, what their job involves. Uh, and then, no, it was a really, really, it was a really, really fun day. So that led to where I am now on my current job. I had loads of jobs, which I'll talk about in another video about my further journey uh, on a quite a different, quite different shows, uh, which is really, really good. I get as much experience in different. Um, productions as possible uh, in another video I'll talk about like different tips that uh, helped me get my CV out there but no it was, it was really really fun uh, so some traits you need to be as a runner definitely flexibility personable like try and talk to everyone you can be willing to do anything uh, within uh, that you're asked of so whether it's making cup teas and coffees because Someone's got to look after the crew. It's not on every production. Sometimes they have catering, but uh, all, uh, everyone really appreciates being asked if they want a drink or food or something. Uh, what else? I, I don't be shy. If someone asks you to stay later, always offer to help because, you know, uh, just because you're not asked doesn't mean there aren't things to do. So if you're unsure, if you're unsure of anything as well, ask because no, there's never a silly question. Also, I'll talk about LinkedIn as well, more in detail, but join LinkedIn. Uh, it's really helpful. It's a great place with connecting people, especially in the industry. Uh, don't 
uh, try and make your LinkedIn as professional as possible. Uh, that's what it's there for. It's a networking site. It's one of the few main and proper like net networking sites. It's very and lots of people on TV work on there and use it. So it's a very good tool to have. Uh, TV CVs, which I'll talk about in more detail in a future video, uh, they're sort of styled differently to other CVs. Like, for example, if you're applying to work in an office, uh, there's a certain way to them. And everyone does them slightly different. And it's always good to make your CV unique because you are you, uh, you are a unique person, and it, the CV is probably one of the first things they see in an application form. Uh, so that, that is talking telly really that's episode one uh next episode i'll talk about what happened after dickinson's real deal my next steps in the journey uh if you have any questions please feel free to comment below uh and i'll try and answer them i'll if there's enough questions i'll do a, a featured video on them but no i hope you have a wonderful saturday that's the type day i'm recording this and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and it helped i hope you have a good day see you soon for episode two of talking telly